Freak Nation, he is back. Keegan Kincaid, off-road champion, Crandon Championship champion. Joining us here in the Freak Nation as we get, get set for the Crandon Off-Road Championships. And Keegan, I've talked to IndyCar drivers. I've talked to NASCAR Cup Series drivers and even NHRA drivers about lining up for their biggest race of the year. A lot of times these drivers will say, I forgot about the start because I was so focused about what happened on that first lap or that first pass. When you're lining up for that land rush, gold rush start at Crandon, do you forget where you are at all because you're so focused on getting that truck through turn one? Oh, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's the probably the most adrenaline rush that I've ever had. You know, sitting on that start line of Crandon, we're lined up side by side. And um, for a moment, every problem that you had before then is gone out the window. And so it's kind of a, a relief. And sometimes you question yourself. Uh, what the heck did I get myself into? Um, even after doing it so many times, you know, I've been racing since 2011 and, you know, it's something about Crandon, you know, coming around blind turn, turn one of Crandon. It's, um, it, it, it's crazy because we're all lined up side by side, you know, 10 to 15 wide. And, um, it's like, who's, who's not going to lift. Hmm. And, um, so it takes a little bit of commitment, having a good spotter. You know, my dad's always been been there for me spotting and giving you a rundown of that first lap, what it looks like, you know, something a little different than Crand at Crandon is we don't get a sight lap. And so we don't know if that, that guy in that water truck doused turn mm -hmm. one or doused turn two, what does it look like? So there's a lot of unknowns that make it risky. And so um, that's what makes Crandon Crandon though is uh that that start land rush start is um something everybody that gets to see it in person remembers freak nation his name is keegan kincaid running for another crandon championship uh not running the full season this year or 2023 uh, we'll get to that in a minute but can you explain by the way with mad tv covering crandon live this year it's going to be added exposure for the series but for those who aren't familiar with the type of start that you're talking about, can you give us a description of the, where the trucks line up, how it starts, and really how it funnels into that first turn? Yeah, so Crandon is really different than any other race that we do. Normally, short course is lined up two by two rolling starts. And when we go to Crandon, they line us up, you know, motocross style, staggered start lined up dead across, you know, 15 wide. And Faye Stetsony, who's been the, the flag man there since I can remember, you know, basically goes to the tower and we sit there and wait. You know, it's basically a gate drop. And we funnel in, we probably have a three 300 yard, 400 yard um, start into turn one that funnels down into basically three to four wide. And so when we're 15 wide going into that, is uh something that's pretty spectacular when they when they drop that and so the land rush is is everything at crandon the start is crucial because you could be sixth seventh eighth and still have an opportunity to get the whole shot and um you know we've always had good success my dad has you know this spring we uh unfortunately i touched the wall a little bit but uh we've been known to run close to the outside wall and and uh flirt with fire into turn one and you know any crash you know top 10 crash has probably been at Crandon in turn one with all these trucks and so yeah lining up motor motocross style and um coming into turn one at nearly 100 miles an hour is uh something pretty crazy Keegan Kincaid pro two champion I and doing the research for this I ran across a video uh, where they had the nose of the truck at the top and your footwork at the bottom. Fascinated with the nuance of left foot braking. When did that come together for you? Because uh, you were touching the brake and you could see just the imperceptible change in the truck's attitude. When did that click and say, oh, that's how you do it? Yeah, you know, um, my dad's always been a two-foot driver 
he was in a seven time pro light champ. And back then it was four cylinder days. Um, and so they had a clutch system. Well, you know, I learned how to drive that way as well. Um, but the technique basically came two footed was, you know, just experience, you know, reactionary timing and, and coordinating your feet with it to do a two foot braking, you know, basically left foot brake, right foot gas in our pro twos, we run a turbo 400 trans. So, um, has a torque converter, uh, don't need a clutch system. So if you can increase that reaction time, you know, you can drive that another 50 feet deeper into the turn. And so I've always just become adapt to it. I don't drive my personal vehicle that way, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it's something that, you know, allows me to keep control of the car and when I'm, whether I'm coming into a turn or even mid turn that allows me to be able to use both and, hmm. and, uh, keep the car in control and, and almost, you know, a lot of it came from Robbie Gordon stadium, super truck racing was a lot of two foot braking on the asphalt and, uh, being able to control the car in the corner and control your wheel speed. And so we do a little bit of that. I do have a handbrake in there. Um, that's all rear. Um, I know the video that you're talking of, um, and that was at Crandon. So yeah, being able to have the option and, and have that there was always crucial for me. And so I've just, now it's become habit, I guess. Well, it takes some, uh, instinct maybe because off-road trucks aren't on the road, like on pavement. They're touching the road like every two or three seconds. You got to, you don't want to lock up the brakes when you're in the air and uh, lock up the, the tight wheels when you're in the air, throw it on the brakes. Uh, that instinct, is that something that came from your dad or is that something he tried to teach you and sons and fathers don't always learn the same way? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so is that something he tried to teach you and you said, leave me alone, dad, I'll figure this out. Yeah, a little bit of, of both. My dad's had a lot of knowledge and I credit him to a lot of my success, but um, I have my own style and, you know, he's always catered to that. You know, he's like, hey, you're going to learn to drive one way and, and be comfortable with that and uh, you'll be able to evolve and make that your own. And so that's kind of what I did. Um, in the Pro 2, we also have like bias adjustment. So front to rear, something that's different and dirt is it's always changing every single lap. And so being able to have that adjustment on the fly, you know, whether it's at the half halfway wait, caution wait, wait. or that, even during Keegan, the race. Wait, I'm cutting you off, Keegan. I'm sorry. No, no problem. You just threw in, you've got left foot braking, <laughs> you've got hand brakes, you've got adjustment, you've got the car in the air, the truck in the air most of the time you're that's that's worse than driving a motorcycle you got hands doing everything yeah and you got to pull. <laughs> right yeah so yeah it's a lot i think uh that was the hardest adjustment for me was like understanding how much is actually going on in the race truck is uh difficult to explain you know we at cranon i'll put on 30 tear offs and hopefully towards the end of the race as the track dries out you can conserve some of those, but um, yeah, there's a lot going on uh, with shifting, even though it is a turbo 400 and it's an automatic, we still manually shift it. So um, a lot going on. And I, I think one advantage is being comfortable. And that's just something that I, I feel like I caught on quick starting is being comfortable driving what I'm given and um, being able to make adjustments and, you know, whether it's going to Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Trucks or racing anything, it's always been able to make a quick adjustment and be able to make it work. So, wow. Keegan Kincaid, three time winner at Crandon, heading back to the Super Bowl of off road racing at Crandon, by the way, just two miles away from his shop. So, hometown Super Bowl for Keegan every year. But you bring up Robbie Gordon, and I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit. There seems to be and maybe it is with some of this left foot braking we're talking about, the comfortability you just referenced, there seems to be a greater influx of off-road drivers into NASCAR of all series. I know the, the, the OGs that people think of are Robbie Gordon, like you referenced, and Jimmy Johnson, but recently Riley Herbst, Sheldon Creed, there's others I could go on. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I think 
um, you know, off road in general and dirt racing has, uh, has like a lot of assets that you can take to asphalt and, and racing and, and Sheldon Creed is a great example, Haley Deegan and a lot of these successful short course racers have gone on to race NASCAR, even, you know, Tony Stewart and Kyle Larson, all these guys have dirt background mm. and keep, you know, my dad's always said, you know, driving with the, the butt <laughs> and uh, the seat, <laughs> you're driving with the seat, not necessarily the wheel. And um, so I think that has a huge advantage. Um, a lot of them have driven a lot of different vehicles and, you know, Sheldon's done great. And obviously Jimmy Johnson coming mm. from short course and, so I think there's a lot going on in short course that translates over, even though it is dirt to asphalt. I think a lot of these guys develop some good traits and some good abilities to be able to transfer that over. Have you ever entertained another form of motorsport or not? Nah? I've, I've had opportunities and, um, you know, Jimmy Johnson always said to us, you know, be careful what you wish for a little bit. I have four kids of my own. Uh, I have a wife, a family. And so the weekends that I do get off, I enjoy spending time with them. And, um, I, I, I really enjoyed, you know, being able to race with Robbie and travel to Australia and Canada. And I, I've got to, you know, I was able to lucky enough and blessed enough to be able to go and do that. And so, you know, my next adventure is, um, a little bit of dabbling, as you can see the car back there is, um, dabbling into some desert racing. So, um knocking some stuff off the bucket list i was able to race the baja 1000 last year and uh i i enjoyed it and so um trying to do some more of that and travel the country and into mexico and um just having fun enjoying it you know kenny talked about it at the somewhere at the top of the interview about how you're not full-time this year. You weren't last year either. You won the full-time 2022 championship. Is this dabbling into other things? The reason why you're not full-time, you also brought up your four kids. Is there, are there other things that you would just rather do? Yeah. You know, my dad, you know, always had, you know, told me he had one regret and that wasn't moving up into uh, other categories and going to do other things. So I've kind of made it a little bit of a priority of my own to, you know, besides the value aspect of it for sponsors and for myself, this is my full-time job, um, being able to take my kids. And I always said, if I couldn't take my family and they couldn't be at the track, I don't think I'd be doing it. And so, you know, I have a great group of friends and family that travel with me. And, and so this is one of those things where I want to go do desert and there's value there for me. And, um, you know, Lucas has been a huge supporter of that and supporting what I I would like to do and provide them value as well. And so uh, we're building the house. We are building in-house um, a new car to go race in the desert. We built all our own short course trucks. Um, that's basically what we have done for a living, my dad and I, and um, just continuing that and um, enjoying it. And uh, I've learned just prioritizing. There's not enough time in a day. And so being able to prioritize that and accomplish the things that I want to do and also my kids want to do. So um, mm -hmm. if it was just me, I'd probably be doing a lot more racing and a lot more traveling. And But um, having the kids is a blessing to be able to bring them to the racetrack and hang out and give them the opportunities that I had. Hey, Keegan, it's it's out there. And back up just a second. Kyle Larson, he and his family enjoyed the summer break, the Olympic mm -hmm. break in NASCAR, mm -hmm. where they had two weekends off. A number of other drivers just got the hell out of here. Rick Hendricks shut the shop down so much so to where none of the, none of the, nobody could come into the shop and work on the car. You win a championship, you fall back and do not run the, the next year or this year full time series. What I'm hearing, what you're putting down here is there were issues of being away from the family on top of running your business, on top of other things. So much so that it was just maybe mentally distressing for you to do all that in one year. Yeah, you know, it 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 was a challenge, you know, with balancing family and um, you know, a lot of people just see the the ins and outs and the good side of racing and our uh the time spent. And um, you know, I just reflected back and said, Hey, I don't you know, I have four kids and they're already three of them are in school and 
one's a middle schooler and I, I realized time is flying and um, I still got to be there and enjoy them. And if they can't come to the track with me, I got to be able to, you know, balance this situation and prioritize. And, and so that's where, that was a huge factor into it. And um, obviously I want to race for championships. That's all. That's kind of how I built my career and my dad's built his is winning races. And, so when we stepped back last year, the main goal was, hey, we're going to go into Crandon and we need to win this cup. Mm-hmm. And um, we based a lot of our success off of that. And and fortunately, it happened. And so, you know, having the family there and all of our friends and um, basically that's that's the whole involvement is being able to have them at the races with me. Family obviously comes first and um, prioritizing that and then um racing and be able to take them there is is next level what additional work do you do you say the shop and all of this this ancillary things that are going on outside of racing what else do you do yeah so basically what's that like what we do is we have a fiber laser table um we do a lot of display stands um we actually just recently did display stands uh behind me for vision wheel we we've done a bunch of display stands for them um We have some local um, connections, Hometown Trolley, which does uh, trolley manufacturing all over the U.S. and the world. And we do a lot of stuff that cuts out. We cut a lot of stuff for them and um, and build cars for people. Um, My dad did the C10 for Walker Evans. Uh, You might have saw that. And staying busy, anything uh, that we can to uh, in the off season is the slow time and and stay busy doing that. And that was the, one of the other reasons to go desert racing is a lot of those races are during my off season of short course. So being able to hit up uh, uh, those events and hit the um, UTV power sports market with that, and also have the truck market in the short course side was a goal of mine. And so we're starting a business on the manufacturing side, doing more wheel stands and display stands for other companies. And um, yeah, it's just, it seems like it's just nonstop. And when I'm not doing that, I'm usually babysitting kids. And I I don't know if you call it babysitting when it's your own kids, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's been good. We recently, this used to be my dad's shop and we purchased that and uh, he's building the house and um, yeah, it's just uh, the summertime goes by fast. Now, good for you. Now, there's, there's a whole lot of drivers who mm-hmm. don't prioritize family like that. Good for you. And that, that's good to hear. Thank you. So your go-to beer after you win, is it Miller Lite? Is it Miller? Or I, I'm told that there's a Wisconsin beer called Black Gold that is uh, superior. What's your go-to? Well, well, my go-to would have been probably Bush Light. But um, I haven't drank in two years. I'll be two years sober in uh, December. So that was another uh, wow. family decision of like, hey, I'm going to take a step back. And, um, you know, it, it was the same thing. It's not fun being hung over with kids and uh, I'm doing them a disservice. So um, it wasn't for my sake, although it's probably better for me. Um yeah, I just stepped back and said, you know, I'm going to eliminate this from my life so I can have some time with the kids and the family and wow. not have something else that that can do that. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate. I got to live that life and experience it, especially after winning the Crandon Cup and drinking out of the cup. And those experiences were great. But um, now looking back on it, it's I don't want to miss my time with kids and not remember them being there and be, them being able to celebrate with me. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, no, I just um, made the decision. It'll be two years in December. And um, I, I don't know, it didn't start off as a full on not drinking thing, um, <laughs> but it kind of turned to that. And so I, I'm enjoying it. Well done. So pepper wow. is your good, your go-to thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, uh, well, the kids are my, entertainment so uh not 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 too much drinking we usually are if we're not there we're camping or hanging out at the lake or um anytime i can get with them the summers go by fast and they're back in school and sports start i also still coach um basketball so trying to balance all that is a 
is a is a tough task but that starts back up in november and i'll be coaching a little more and just giving back i i enjoy doing that keegan i've got one daughter she's 10 years old and my hangovers my 10 year old hangovers from taking care of her have yeah. been worse than my beer hangovers yeah <laughs> i'm yeah. so damn tired after taking care of one daughter i can only imagine if you got yeah. four yeah so i have a little rundown i have a two-year-old daughter that'll be three here in september and then i have twin boys that are five and then uh a 13 year old boy so yeah it's um it's busy the little ones started baseball too so all summer long if i'm not at the racetrack i'm at, probably at a sports complex and yeah. so uh, my dad never forced me to race when i was little i was really into sports and basketball went and played college basketball for a while and then um, the opportunity presented itself, you know, to go racing and I took advantage of that and kind of led from there. So I want my kids to have their own passion mm -hmm. and not my passion be theirs. So I'll support them in whatever they do. But if one of them goes racing, you're there for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously that, and, um, you know, one of my oldest uh, was in wrestling and I was a basketball player. So that was a tough one for me to grasp, but um, yeah, it's, it's good. I'll, I'll be here to support them. Hopefully uh, guide them into something that's a little more affordable. Like, um, but uh, no, if they want to follow in my steps, I'm 100% supportive of that. And um, hopefully here to help them. Yeah. Motorsports and affordable. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no. no such thing. Well, this is awesome, buddy. Uh, Keegan Kincaid, again, running for another Crandon championship. You can watch all of it on MAV TV, Freak Nation. Buddy, good luck to you, man. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, next time I talk to you, I'll have another cup. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, man, go, go go back to work. You got dudes running in on your, on, in your office yeah. there. Two of them were kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Have a good one. At Lucas Oil, we take pride in creating problem-solving products to make your car care easier. We protect your vehicle and make it run longer so you can focus on the things that matter most. Lucas Oil, it works. Freak Nation, head to your local General Tire dealership now to check out the latest additions to their product lineup. The Grabber family of tires are engineered for durability and feature innovative performance features that offer all-terrain capability, blending exceptional off-road durability and impressive on-road performance, all while sporting aggressive style. For outstanding off-road performance coupled with strong street manners, look no further than General Tire. General Tire delivers for whatever you do and the official tire of Speed Freaks since 2001. Rev up your passion for speed. Mav TV Go is the ultimate streaming app for race fans. Enjoy exclusive racing, live events, oh, man. groundbreaking originals, and a lot more. Anytime, anywhere, for free. Whether you're a diehard or just getting started, Mav TV Go has something for everyone. Mav TV Go, your global home of motorsports. Now on the go. Download the app now.